Welcome to another lesson. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the types of charging. What are the methods for charging, whether conduction or condu induction and conduction, and the differences between them. Now, if you have landed in the channel, by all means, subscribe to our growing community. If you're a physics student or someone preparing for an engineering entry-level exam, then these concepts are a must-know. So, let's get the lesson started. So we're going to examine the two types of charging. So we're going to have charging by conduction and charging by induction. So these are the two mechanisms when we are going to charge two different objects. Let's examine the first one. So charging by conduction involves direct contact between charges. So simply put, it's a mechanism for charging in which we're going to have two different charges. They're going to be in contact with each other. Let's say I have charge A, charge A, which is a negative charge, and charge B, which is completely neutral. It means the charges, the positive and negative charges, they're simply equal to each other, and this charge is neutral. Charge A is predominantly negative. It means it has extra electrons in it. So what I'm going to be doing right now, I'm going to bring those charges in contact. So we're going to have charge A in contact with charge B. So what's going to happen in this case, the charges which are close to the barrier are in contact, they're going to jump to B. Now, if both charges A and B, they are equal in size, equal in dimension, they are exactly identical, what's going to happen is they are going to split the charges equally. So if we have an extra charge like right here, so let's count the charges in A. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say we've got six electrons. What will happen is, three out of those electrons are going to jump to object B, assuming that both A and B are completely identical. Now, let's separate them. We're going to have object A, which is negatively charged, having three electrons, let's say, and object B Is going to be negatively charged as well having the other three electrons now what do you notice in this case when we are charging by conduction both charges end up being the same Think about conduction as being contagious. If you have an object and you bring it into contact with another object, if this object is charged, like we have with this case with A, it gets into contact with B. If it's in contact, both of them they are going to have the same charge. So uh, this, the, the easiest way to think about charging by conduction is direct contact or being contagious. If you have an object which is negatively charged, if you bring it in contact with another object which is a neutral, the neutral object upon contact with the negatively charged object will absorb the charges from it. Now, assuming that they are exactly identical, they are exactly the same in terms of shape, parameters, material, they are going to split the charges equally between them. Now, this is for charging with conduction. Let's take a look at induction. Now, charging by induction involves charging from a distance without 
contact. So conduction, we're going to have contact between the charges, between the object. With induction, we're not going to have any contact whatsoever. And let's replay the previous example where we have charge A. We're going to have negative charges. Charge B, which is completely neutral, no charges whatsoever. Now what I'm going to be doing is, now concentrate at this part. I'm going to bring object A close to B. Now, they are not going to be in contact with each other. But they are going to be within a close distance from each other. This is B and this is A. Now, look what happens here. As I get the object or charge A, which is negatively charged, close to the object B, which is a neutral, because the object B has positive charges, the protons, and we got the neutral charges, the neutrons, and the negative charges, the electrons. But the overall charge is zero. That's why B is neutral. We're going to have a charged separation in which the negative charges from A are going to attract the positive charges inside B, and they are going to repel the negative charges. So you see those charges towards the side, they are going to be attracting the positive part of B and repelling the negative charges within B. So if you zoom in at object B, what are you going to be having? You're going to have a neutral object, but with polarized ends. It means one side is going to be positive, and the other side is going to be negative. This will be the positive side, and this will be the negative side. So if I want to charge B, what I'm going to be doing in this case, this is what we call as earthing, I'm going to connect B, let's say, to a copper wire, and connect it to the ground. Now, these charges are going to go through the earthing system and will be absorbed by planet Earth, and if I separate the charges right now, A and B, object B will be positively charged. So let's walk through the transition for the sake of convenience, just to make sure that you got the steps, all of them correctly. So we started off by having object A and object B, they are a distance from each other, we got them close, but without any contact. Because A is negative and B is neutral, the charges towards this part of object A, the charge A, are going to attract these positive charges within B and going to repel these negative charges within B. Yet, B is still considered to be a neutral object because the overall charge is zero, but within B, there we have a split. One part is positive, the other part is negative. So, in order to charge B, I need to get rid of the charges. And the easiest way to get rid of a charge is basically by getting rid of the electrons within the charge because they are easily mobile, they can move. So, I'm going to connect it to an earthing system, which is a copper wire. And this wire will be going directly into the ground. So, these charges will flow into the earth. And I will end up having the leftover charges, which are basically the positive charges. So you can see the difference between charging by conduction and charging by induction is that charging by induction yields an oppositely charged object, while charging by conduction, because it's contagious, we're going to have exactly the same charge. So let's have a quick recap. So charging by conduction involves direct contact between the charges. You bring these two objects closer to each other, you get contact, the charges from one object will flow into the other object, and once you separate them, both of them, they are going to be exactly the same charge both charges end up being exactly the same. 
Now, charging by induction involves charging from a distance without any contact. So if I have object A and object B, object A is negatively charged, and I'm going to get it close to object B, but without any contact. The charges, the negative charges within A are going to attract the positive part of B and repel the negative part of B. So object B will end up being polarized. When I say polarized, it means one part is positive and the other part is negative. Yet, the overall charge in this case is zero because they cancel each other out. Now, if I want to get rid of the charges within B, the negative charges, I'm going to connect it to an earthing system, which is like a copper wire, and I will connect it to earth, to the ground, and the charges will flow from the object B into earth. Now, when I separate the charges A and B, A will retain being negative, and B will have a complete opposite charge, which is positive. So in this case, charging by induction yields the opposite or oppositely charged object. So that's the main difference. These, these are the two main differences that you have between charging by conduction and charging by induction. If we're going to create a table, it will look like this. Now, the differences between charging by conduction and charging by Induction, conduction, you have contact, induction, no contact, conduction, same charges on both objects, by induction, opposite charges on objects. So here we go. These are the two types of charging or the mechanism of charging, conduction by induction, and the differences between them. We hope that you found the lesson beneficial. Now, this lesson is part of a sequel where we talk about Coulomb's law, solving problems regarding Coulomb's law, the types of conduction and induction, all of them, they are quite related to each other. So make sure that you join our channel and take a look at the videos that we have released addressing these various aspects. Till the next lesson.